Welcome everyone to the last PBC worship experience of October. My name is Tina and I'm your host for today. Wherever you're tuning in from, I hope that you've been making the most of the past 10 months of this year. We only have two more months left and I hope that you have been integrating and taking heed of the Lord's word through this church every Sunday. There have been about 40 teachings so far for the year of 2024 up until the end of October. I hope that you are revisiting these teachings. I hope that you are looking at them even when we are meeting together on Sundays. I hope that you are integrating all of these messages and words from God into your life, into your daily practice. And so with that, we're going to be starting our first session of prayer followed by a session of worship. Hello family, welcome, welcome to this beautiful Sunday, the last Sunday in the month of October. God has indeed been good to us, he is faithful, he is loyal, and he keeps his promises that we are able to see January 2024 to the last month, few months into um, year 2024. God is indeed good, God is magnificent, he keeps his promises, his words never fall to the ground. Let us enter into his presence today with thanksgiving. Let us enter his courts with praise let us magnify him for his indeed good because this is the day that he has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it god we worship you father lord we magnify you my god has been good to me oh magnify the lord with me family let us exalt his name together this beautiful sunday for god is indeed faithful i sought him and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my troubles if god has done great things for you this year magnify the lord with me magnify the lord with me exalt him exalt him tell him all the things and mighty things that he has he has done for you and who he is to you father lord we worship you father lord we worship you we thank you for your god we thank you for you are indeed good you are kind you are faithful you are loyal you do not change you hear our cry oh god every time we call upon you you answer father we worship you the creator of all things the giver of life father we worship you lord who can compare to you who is dear like you among all gods who is like you oh you are glorious and holiness you are fearful in praises father lord we worship you you are the only god that can walk on water you are the only god that answers by fire you are the only god that can make impossible things possible you are the one who existed before time and after time you will still continue to exist you are i am that i am you are alpha and omega the beginning and the end there is none like you you are the one who moves mountains and you make mountains like plains and they are like shafts before the wind father lord we give you praise father lord we exalt you thank you for your love that permeates our soul thank you for being our, our place of safety thank you for being our, our strong tower father we run into you and we are safe father we thank you lord thank you for your peace oh god that is beyond understanding thank you because it's in you we live we move and we have our being we are nothing without you lord all that i am is because of you thank you for saving my life thank you for changing my story thank you for bringing me out of darkness into your light thank you for dying on the cross for me thank you for sacrificing your life that i may live thank you lord jesus thank you lord you are being faithful you are my rock i cannot be shaken you are my firm foundation thank you for being my light thank you for being my strength and my shield father i can put all my trust in you and i know that i would never be put to shame father lord i exalt you i magnify you ancient of days i magnify you the one who is able to do all things beyond my own imagination father lord i exalt you thank you for being so good thank you for being so kind you all we raise your name on high because only your name is worthy to be praised father we Say thank you, Lord. Thank you for all you have done among us. Thank you for the miracles, the signs, and the wonders. Thank you, Lord, for making way for us. Thank you, Father, for saving our lives and changing our names, changing our story. Thank you for 2024. Thank you for this beautiful family, PBC. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done among us. May your name be exalted, O oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we come before you today and we ask you for mercy. 
Father, Lord, we ask you for mercy. You say in your word that if we regard iniquity in our heart, that it is impossible for us to please you. So, Father, we come before you and we act only for your mercy. Father, you said in your word that your steadfast love never ceases and your mercy, they never come to an end, that they are new every morning and great is your faithfulness. Father, because of your steadfast love, Father, show us mercy. Show us mercy, O God. Father, we come before you and we ask for mercy. Have mercy upon us, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitudes of your tender mercies. Father, blot out our transgressions, O God. Wash us thoroughly from our iniquity and cleanse us from all our sins. Father, look upon us and let the blood of Jesus wash us clean from every iniquity. Father, Lord, any iniquity in our hearts, Father, Lord, any way we have come short of your glory, Father, Lord, we ask you to wash us clean. Father, cleanse us from every form of unrighteousness. Create in us a clean heart and renew your right spirit within us. Father, it's our desire to please you, Lord. Father, help us to please you. Father, have mercy on us. Let your mercy that is renewed, O oh Lord, over us, let us speak for us today. In Jesus' mighty name. Finally, brethren, let us pray over today's service. Oh, Holy Spirit, we ask you to, to, to take total preeminence of today's service. Father, we ask that your word comes with revelation oh god let it fall on good ground today your word says in psalms 119 verse 130 that the entrance of your word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple father we pray today that the unfolding of your word comes with simplicity comes with comprehension oh god for everyone who hears it father we pray that your word would enlighten and revive every hearer that would hear today and even those that would hear afterwards father let your word deliver us let your word bring freedom let your word bring change today in the name of jesus father let your word today bring answers to questions that people have had oh god in the name of uh, that people have had oh god in the name of jesus father lord make way for us father let your word come with with understanding let it come with light in the name of jesus father we just want to say thank you thank you father lord thank you for making way today thank you for doing something great amongst us today thank you for every steward that will be ministering to us today father lord we pray that you give them understanding we give we pray that you give them power the power of the holy spirit oh god in the name of jesus let your presence be felt in the in the in the worship and also in the word in the name of Jesus. Father, let us look back and say, yes, indeed, you were present today in the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you, Lord. Father, thank you for what you're doing among us. In Jesus' mighty name, we're prayed. Amen. God bless you, family, and enjoy the service. Amen. And Omega We worship You are King You are Lord To be praised 
we give you go
glory, glory to the King, the King of Kings. We say glory. the throne. He that seated upon the seat and upon the throne of Jasper. We worship your majesty Lord for you are the king upon, upon the throne. Father you are the king. Only you are king. Oh, you are the king, the king of kings. You are the king of all the truth. One more time for your glory, oh, oh. you are. To the Lord, a joyful song. I will praise His name, for the Lord is good. I will sing unto the Lord a joyful song. I will praise His name, for the Lord is good. I will sing unto the Lord a joyful song. I will praise his name for the Lord. Everybody sing, sing unto the Lord. Sing unto him. Joyful song. Come on now. I will sing unto him. Praise, giving you the high praise. I will. 
Jesus, we join the 24 elders today to bow before your throne. We say you, O Lord, are holy. Thank you, Father. Thank you for how far you brought us, O God. May your name be glorified. King of kings, the most excellency. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. We worship you, O God. Thank you, reliable Father, dependable God, because we can depend and rely on you, the one that faileth not. Ah, God, if, we, if, we, if, if our body be filled with thoughts, we know it's not enough to glorify you. If we step praising from yesterday, oh God, it's not enough to give you thanks. Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for what you've done in our lives, oh God. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Psalm 66 verse 18 says, If, if, if I regard iniquity in my heart, ah, the Lord will not hear me. I will not us to look in the world and say, God, search my heart. Is there any way I've sinned against you? Or oh, come short of your glory. Lord, have mercy, oh God. Have mercy, have mercy. Look upon me with your mercy, Abba Father. Look upon me with your mercy, oh God. Search my heart and know my way, oh God. And see if there is any evil way, oh God. And have mercy, oh God. Have mercy. Let your mercy prevail. In the name of Jesus, have mercy upon your church. In the name name of Jesus, oh God, forgive us our sin, oh God, in every way we sin against you, forgive us our sin, oh God, show us mercy, the Bible says, create in me a new heart, a clean heart, oh God, renew the right spirit within me, and the psalmist goes ahead to say, cast me not away, Jehovah, cast us not away from your presence, oh God, cast us not away, oh God, from your presence, oh God, to give it every form of iniquity in my heart, oh God, because we know the prayer of a sinner is an abomination unto God. Jesus, have mercy. Show us mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to pray and say, God, help me in every area of my life that I've been distracted, oh God. Help me, oh God, take away every form of distraction in my life. In the name of Jesus, every form of distraction, oh God. Either from having my eyes on worldly things, oh God, help me to set my heart right. Help me to set Set my heart right. Set me on fire for you. Set me on fire for you, oh God. May I be among when you're calling the one who done right, oh God. That he take my name off the book of, of death and put in the book of life, Jesus. Help me not to be distracted. You know what said Peter? The enemy tried to see people are pray for you. Are rather delicate. Is that your prayer this morning, oh God? Uphold me, oh God. Keep me in alignment with your will. Keep me in alignment. Oh God, that when you say work, I work, and when you say stand, I stand. Oh God, I don't want to go any other place apart from your presence. So God, help us to stay. Keep me burning in the name of Jesus. Take away every distraction in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Colossians 3 verse 2. It says, Set your mind, set your heart on the 
things above and not of the things on earth. Brethren, pray that prayer. Let it be your prayer this morning and say, Oh God, help me to fix my eyes on the things above. Help me to fix my eyes on the things above, Jesus. Help me to set my heart, my mind, even in my thinking, even in my speaking, oh God, that everything, everything, everything inside of me will speak Christ. Everything will speak life. In the name of Jesus, today, our back Father, we choose to set our mind on the things above. I choose to set my heart on the things that pleases the Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, my life will give you glory. My generation will set the name of the Lord. My life will glorify you, oh God. Help me to set my heart on the things above. Help me to set my heart on the things above. In Jesus' name, oh God. Thank you, Father, because I know that anyone who sets his mind on God can never, can never be disappointed with a solid drop, oh God. Help me, Father, that it will be different, oh God. We keep burning for you in the name of Jesus. Romans 8 was in there is yet for now. No condemnation for them who are in Christ Jesus. It means that once you are in Christ, you can't be condemned. Once you are in Christ, you can't be condemned because you are under the highest security. Ah, it says, who walk not after the flesh, walk by the spirit. Help me, Jesus. Help me to walk by the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I choose to walk by the spirit and not after the flesh. Help me to walk not after the flesh, oh God, because we know the flesh will die, but the spirit, my spirit will glorify your name. Help me to walk not after the flesh, but by the spirit. In the name of Jesus, the word of the Lord says, for God is a spirit, and they that worship him, they that come to him, must worship in spirit and in truth. Jehovah, help me to worship you in spirit and in truth. Help me to worship you in spirit and in truth, Jehovah, because we know that they that come must have the heart posture. Your heart posture must be right, oh God. You must be in alignment to the will and the word of the Lord, oh God. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. We cannot do this without you, Jesus. Help me, help me, Lord. No, we need your help to do this race, oh God. Help me, oh God, to worship in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So much said to you, so he said, let's let your, let your eyes look on what before you. He said, let your eyes look, like, look on what ahead. Don't look straight. Let your eyes look straight. And then fix your gaze on what's before you. Fix your gaze. Meaning that our gaze has to be on Christ. Jesus, that's our prayer this morning, oh God. Help me, oh God, to look straight ahead. Ah, help me to look straight ahead. Help me to fix my gaze on you. Because it's only when we fix our gaze on Christ, on the old rugged cross, that we can be distracted. A mind that is fixed on Christ will be different. We keep burning. Because it's in you that we child. It's in you uh, we stay ignited, oh God. Help me to fix my gaze on you. Mighty Lord, reliable God, help me to fix my gaze in you at all times. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We see what you're doing, oh God. The word of the Lord says, no man, no one who puts his hand in the cloud and looks back his feet for the service of the kingdom of our God. Ah, God, when we set our gaze on you, may I not look back. May I not look back, oh God. May I not be weary. May I not look back, oh God. May we move in the direction of the Abba Father. Make that a personal prayer this morning and say, God, as my eyes are fixed on you, may I not be distracted, oh God. We choose not to look back as our hand is on the cloud today. We choose not to look back in the name of the Lord. Empower us today, oh God. Empower us that our gaze will be on you, continually on you. In the name of Jesus, empower me today. Empower us today. Empower us today. Empower us today in Jesus' name. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Thank you, God. You know, Philippians 4 8. It says, ah, 
whatever and then this future is, is so meaningful because you see whatever whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is right thank you for the spirit thank you god says whatever is pure whatever is lovely and whatever is admirable and that question says whatever is commendable if anything if anything is excellent if anything is worthy of praise that you should think about these things God help me to think right in this season help us to think right Jesus help me to think right I cannot afford to do this race and lose at the end oh God blessed be your name oh God thank you for creating in us the right spirit thank you for transformation of life thank you because we know we cannot conform to the patterns of this world the scripture says but be you renewed like be transformed by the renewal the renewal of your mind hey so you know what is right and pleasing to god you know what is right you know to do god's will because the will of the lord we know is pleasing the way the perfect good will he says god's will his will which is pleasing the perfect will of god help me oh god help me we cannot do this on our own jesus blessed be your name oh god be thou exalted receive the highest praise oh god and even as god's servants will bring the word of the lord today oh god prepare our hearts to receive because this service is ordained to bless someone today blessed be your name oh god above all holy spirit we pray for thy outstretched hand oh god to touch us in places where only you can touch ah touch our hearts may our lives be transformed oh god that after this service we will say oh god true the lord has touched me blessed be your name in jesus most precious name we pray amen amen and amen hallelujah amen words of life words of hope give us strength help us go in this world where have we roam? Ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words, ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open heart. Oh, let the ancient words. Hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Let's do a wonderful thing today. Since this is the last Sunday in the month of October, which means really by this time next week, we're going to be in the month of November. And believe it or not, 2024, which felt like it just started yesterday, has two months left two months left just like that weeks become months months become years and we're getting older on this side of the divide but through it all god has been gracious he has been merciful and he has been faithful so why don't you join me for the first minute let's just dedicate the first minute to nothing but thanksgiving thank you jesus thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. Keep it going. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Give him praise. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Bless his name. Bless his name. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. God has been good. God has been good. God has been good. Thank him. Thank him. Do you know how many times the human heart beats per minute? I believe they say it's 72 times per minute. That means it beats more times than there are seconds in a minute. 72 times in every 60 seconds. Do you know how many seconds are in one minute? Do you know how many minutes are in one hour? So you can start doing the math. If it is 72 times in 60 seconds, that means on average, your heart beats more than one time per second because there are more beats than there are seconds. 72 is more than 60, basic math. 72 times in a minute. So 72 divided by 60 is probably like 1.1. They're about 1.1, 1.2. So that means 60 times 60 seconds is equal to one minute. So 60 seconds are in one minute. So that means your heart beats 72 times in one minute. 60 minutes are in one hour. That means your heart beats 72 times one times 72 times in, in, a, in a minute times 60. Then 72 times 60 times 24 hours in a day times 24. 72 times 60 times 24 times 7 days in a week. <laughs> then you begin to see what kind of like incredible mercy God has shown us. By the time you do that math, in a lifetime, your heart beats over in billions of times. And while you're asleep, your heart is still beating. Don't you know that if your heart stops beating for more than a minute or two and blood st stops getting pumped to your brain, the person is dead. The person is dead. God has seen you through. You think you're going through troubles? Somebody else is praying to have your kind of health while going through your kind of challenge. I'm telling you, those in the coma, in the hospital, don't have your problems. Would you rather be them? Or would you rather hope for God to help you navigate through your problems? I want you to know that to the living, and to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. A living dog is better than a dead lion. God has been gracious to you. You cannot deny this. And the, the, the proof is in the pudding. So give him thanks. Just say, Father, I thank you. I thank you. And I thank you. Glory be to God forevermore. We're continuing, even with the ongoing series on the model church. This is now what? July, August, September, October. So this is almost four months of consistent teaching on the model church. It's almost as though the huge chunk of our year three will be literally on one series, the model church. Case study from the book of Acts of the Apostles. <laughs> Today we're going to continue and we're going to journey from where we stopped last week. Last week, the theme was power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name of Jesus. And what we saw was that the disciples, obviously, Peter and John in this case, by the grace of God, had administered healing to a man who was crippled. It caused a stare amongst people, and people began to wonder, by whose power have you guys done this? And they said, is this the reason why you're persecuting us? Do you really want to know the power that helped us to do this and that enabled us to do this? And then they began to teach on the fact that it is power in the name of Jesus. Acts 4 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Today, by the grace of God, we're going to be continuing from the same text of scripture, Acts chapter number four. But this time around, we're going to be continuing from verses 23 we stopped at 22 last week the council has threatened them the more not to preach about the gospel of jesus christ and they said we cannot help ourselves not that we will not but we cannot because we are possessed you see not every possession is bad possession by foul spirits is terrible that is one of the terrible things to happen that can happen to a person being possessed by a demoniac or a demon is a terrible thing to, be, to, to experience. Being possessed by addiction, oh, that's a 
by a bad place to be. But being possessed by the Holy Spirit, oh, that's a beautiful place to be. That's the kind of possession I hope to have. And I have, and I hope never to recover from. To be possessed completely, to be taken over, to be controlled by the Holy Spirit of Jesus. Meaning, you love like he does. You are at peace with people. You are able to have joy, regardless of the economic situation, inflation or not. You are in joy. That's the kind of possession I like. The possession of the power of God that makes you an incurable soul winner. I love that kind of possession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May I never recover from it. And I pray that that will be the case for you as well. We cannot help ourselves, they said. <clears throat> we must continue to tell everybody about what we have seen and heard. Mm. And then the council threatened them further. You cannot do this. You must stop. They said, we're not going to fear you above our fear of the Lord. We fear God when we fear man. The miracle is evident. You see what God has done. You can't refute it. Why are you trying to stop the work of God? But the threats got to the disciples because the, the, the intimidation tactic of the enemy is always so heavy. And even though they, they responded boldly and audaciously when they were outside, they knew that the threats got to them because every threat is a seed. And so what was their response to that threat? The response to that threat was that they ran back in. They ran back in. And that's where we're going to start from today. They ran back in. And that's where we're going to start from today. How did you respond to the threats of the devil? Let us pray. Father, we thank you because you're a good God. We thank you because you are gracious, you are kind, you are lovely, you are loving, you are love. You are pure, you are true, you are real. There's nothing about you that is weak. You are the pillar of strength. Keep us, you guide us, you guard us. Holy Spirit divine, please put your word in my mouth. Grant unto me an akazo power. Let the words coming forth through me cut through the hearts of your people in a good way with surgical precision. That living word that is sharper than any two-edged sword, let it pierce through the dividing of soul and spirit even now to the end that it might produce salvation here and for as many who will listen to this in the aftermath several years to come. I am yours and I yield. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Acts chapter number 4. Turn your Bibles with me as we journey. 23 to 31. That is our focus for today. Acts chapter 4, 23 to 31. Acts chapter 4, 23 to 31. As soon as they were freed, I told you that the threat, even though they were given a public expression of audaciousness and boldness, it got to them a little bit. <laughs> and you have to admit that. There's nothing wrong with that. Be real with God. As soon as they were freed, the threat of jail, the threat of imprisonment, the threat of levies and taxes upon them, the threats of all manners of ostracizings, the threat of crucifixion is what they were facing. You're going up against the system here. So yes, they were saying we cannot help ourselves publicly, but their hearts were thinking about their families. Peter was a family man. He had a wife. <laughs> as soon as they were freed, Peter and John returned to the other believers and told them what the leading priests and elders had said. Huh. Where do you go to for safe haven? When you're going through your challenges in life huh? who is your company of advisors and counselors what friends do you have they returned to the other believers and told them what the living priest and the others had said when they heard the report all the believers lifted their voices up together unity accordance oneness they lifted up their voices. What is your response to the situations of life? Do you cry wolf? Do you cry baby? Do you throw a pity party? Do you throw a self-pity issue? Or do you pray? 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 What is your response to the life impediments? What is your response to the vicissitudes of life? They say when life throws you lemons, make lemonade. I don't know about that. When life throws you lemons, please pray. I don't know about lemonade. 
that money is not the cure for your prayer for your problems. Prayer and trust in God is the cure. <laughs> okay. You can drink lemonade and still have serious issues waiting for you after the lemonade, lemonade is finished. <laughs> okay. Now, when they heard the report, verse 24, all the believers lifted their voice together, unity of heart and oneness of spirit, in prayer to God. And here is their prayer. Oh, sovereign God. Oh, my God. This is the New Living Translation I'm reading now. Oh, sovereign Lord. Creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. You spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David. I told you David was a prophetic giant, a prophetic titan in his own right and in his own rank. You spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant, saying, Why were the nations so angry? Why did the hidden rage? Why did they waste their time with futile plans? Why have they imagined the vain thing, KJV? The kings of the earth prepared for battle. The rulers of this world are prepared for war, KJV. And the rulers gather together against the Lord and against his Messiah, aka his anointed, aka his Christ, aka his Christos. They have gathered together. When they gather against you, they're gathering against the Lord. When they plot against believers, they are plotting against the Lord. That's what we see from this scripture. It was not Jesus that they threatened. It was Peter and John that they threatened. But when they were praying, they said, Lord, they cited scriptures and said they're gathering against you. Ha! Huh. They are following the template here. So, as you go about doing the work of the Lord, when you, when you face oppo oppositions, don't cry. Just go and say, Lord, these people are opposing you. They are opposing your work. They are opposing your agenda. They are trying to sabotage your will. That's what we prayed for Times Square. And the Lord began to give us breakthroughs. Yes. Don't be emotional with God. Be principled. Follow the scripture. You can cry, but cry on the word. Yes. In fact, verse 27, I continue. This has happened here in this very city for Herod Antipas, Pontius Pilate, the governor, the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were all united against Jesus, your holy servant. I told you that the Lord Jesus Christ was a man, but he was also God. I told you that he was the son of God, but he was also the servant. You can see right here, the Lord Jesus Christ, your holy servant. Because when he came in the form of the flesh, he did not come, you know, in the form of God. He came as man. And as man, he came to serve. He told you himself. And they're going to put the scripture there. The Bible says, Jesus speaking, it says, The Son of Man has not come to be served, but rather to serve. That's what servants do. Servants serve. Painters paint. Singers sing. Dancers dance. Servants serve. The Son of Man has not come to be served, but rather to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Scripture. So, giving credence to Acts chapter number 4 and verses 27. They united against Jesus, your holy servant. If Jesus can serve, why are you so proud of purpose and full of yourself? Hmm. Selah. They were united against Jesus, your holy servant, whom you anointed. May the Lord anoint you. But you see, anointing is one of the greatest things that you will get. I, I, it will mark a difference in your life. I just pray that your humility will be able to sustain your anointing. May God not regret anointing you. That's a prayer right there. Can you put that in the chat box? Lord, may you not regret anointing me. Anointing is the very perils of the Lord. Anointing is like God's diamond. May God not regret anointing you. It's a special thing, I tell you. Hmm. It will differentiate your entire calling. They gathered against Jesus, your holy servant, whom you anointed. But everything they did was determined beforehand according to your will. And now, oh Lord, this is still the prayer they're praying of. Hear your threats. Spoke about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he went through. Then they said, Now, oh Lord, it's our turn. 
hear their threats and do what? And give us, the model church, your servants, like Jesus, your holy servant. We too are your servants, as Jesus was your holy servant. We too are your servants, as Jesus was your holy servant. We too are your servants. This idea that as a New Testament believer, you're no longer a servant, you're just only a son. And no, 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 no. You have multiple hearts to wear. You're a king, you're a priest, you're a friend, you're a son, you're a servant. All are true. You have to understand the scripture in the full holistic picture. And don't be a one-sided, lopsided Christian with a limited understanding. These are all New Testament scriptures I'm quoting. And this is post-resurrection. This is post-Pentecost. This is post-Holy Spirit's arrival. Yet, they call themselves servants. Jesus, your holy servant, who you anointed, we, your servants, as well. Give us your servants, not regular boldness, great boldness in preaching your word. Imagine that. The demand was for boldness to preach, not for boldness to flaunt on social media, uh, your, your jewelry, and your, 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 whatever, your, your new car, or whatever it is. Boldness for preaching. I like that kind of boldness. Give unto us, they cried. Stretch out your hand with healing power. Yes. May miraculous signs and wonders be done through the name of, again, your holy servant, Jesus, repeated. Jesus was the son of God, but he was the holy servant of God. We are sons of God by adoption, but we are also servants of God by grace. Glory to God forevermore. Verse 31. After this prayer, the meeting place shook. Hey. They prayed for boldness and for God to show them that he has answered their prayer. There must be physical proof to uh, to attest on the spirit they just received. The spirit of boldness came upon them and it was evidenced by a physical seismic activity. There was tremble. There was a shaking. Can I pray for you, all of you who are still so laden and possessed with the spirit of timidity and cowardice? I, I, Kavali, I trust that spirit in you and it expires today. I pray there will be an exchange. After this teaching, may the spirit of God come mightily upon you. The topic of today's teaching is boldness is vital in the modern church. Boldness is vital. It is vital. It is of critical necessity. Especially in these dark and perilous times where godlessness is rampant. Then the place shook after the prayer. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Yet again. <laughs> they prayed for boldness and God answered them with the Holy Spirit. What does that tell you? It tells you that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of boldness. It's the spirit of boldness. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, timidity. What else does He give us? He gives us the spirit of power, boldness, love, boldness, and a sound mind. Boldness. He said, I didn't give you that one, fear. <laughs> I know what I gave you. I gave you the spirit of boldness, the Holy Spirit. Ah, when they had received and been filled with the Holy Spirit, then, and this is where we're going to end, they preached the word of God with boldness going forward. Ha! Ah, are you listening to me and you don't know the Lord? You're shy, you're timid. You want to be bold. 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 Let me invite you to the spirit of Jesus who gives you that sponsorship. The one who brings you into the economy of might. The one who brings you into the economy of boldness. The one that baptizes you with the yoke of courage that makes you take on your world and your generation as a lone voice in the wilderness like John the Baptist. Cry! Hmm. You need him. But you cannot get the Holy Spirit without getting Jesus first. Yes. You cannot get the Holy Spirit indwelling in you if you've not yet received Jesus. Jesus Christ is the one who pours the Spirit of God in you through the promise of the Father. Yeah, that's just the truth. You have to receive Jesus Christ first. John 3, 3, except a man be born again, 
that is receiving the Lord, he cannot see the kingdom. Only after being born again can you, John 3, 5, except a man be born of water and spirit. So you see, Christ before you receive his spirit. If you reject man and the person of Christ, you cannot receive his spirit. So just say after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this word. I have been living my life all up until now under the rock in timidity, in sin, in secret sin. Thank you for saving me today. Thank you for breaking the yoke of fear that has come upon me because of sin and also because of the lies I've believed from the devil. Please break this yoke. Break this yoke. Regardless of my accent, I will preach this gospel of Jesus Christ with boldness. Regardless of my educational pedigree, I don't care. I will preach this Christ until the day I see you. Please come into my heart and save me. I repent of my sins and I obtain the grace to forsake them. I thank you for bringing me to your family. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. You said that prayer, congratulations, you are saved. And just like that, God can begin a walk with you. You are now qualified to receive the Holy Spirit. Yes, you just simply have to ask for Him. And He will come and help you. And then you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. Click that link. It's 30 seconds. Fill out your data and your information. We will follow up with you offline. And we're going to grow together. This is going to be a beautiful journey. I am excited for you. And I look forward seeing you in the month of November. God bless you and I wish you all a velocity exit not just to the month of October but to the year 2024. God bless you. Stay rapture rebel. Amen. Let us go into the session now of tithes and offering as our dear sister carries us into that. Tina, please over to you. You guys heard it. The model church must be bold. There is no other way. We have to be bold and I hope that you know the past four months of teachings on this one topic, the model church has been blessing you mightily in your lives. I hope that you are revisiting parts of this series as they come up in your daily lives and as they come up in your daily practice, you're referencing them. Be rest assured that you can always find all of our past teachings from four months ago or even up until two years ago, all on our YouTube channel under our playlist tab. You will find everything, especially all these installments on the model church. And so now let us give thanks to the Lord through our tithes and our offerings. You cast out our fear. Now we are unafraid. We are unafraid. You wrap us in grace. Now we are unashamed, we are unashamed. You cast out our fear, now we are unafraid, we are unafraid. You wrap us in we are on the shades. We are on the shades.
Friends, we're at the end of today's worship experience. We want to encourage that for next week, you bring somebody along. It is the easiest church in the world to join. There's no driving, there's no walking, there's no taking public transit. You just have to click a link. And most of us can click a link and be connected to Wi-Fi on one time during Sunday. And so we hope that you open up that contact list, find one person, two, three, however many, to invite to church next week and bring them along. We hope to see you there. We hope to see your friend there. Until then, we hope you have a blessed week.